So let's talk about the things that I cut out of my life over the past several years because they were just low vibe and bringing me down. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, embrace their womanhood and become their best selves. So if that's something you wanna do, you should consider subscribing and sticking around. So let's just get right on into it. Today I have eight things that I cut out of my life because they just didn't make me feel the way that I wanted to feel. They didn't give me the right energy. They made me feel bad. They made me feel low vibe. And when I cut these things out, there was a noticeable sizable shift in how I felt. So the first thing that I cut out of my life are things like like violent and scary movies or like true crime podcasts or like really creepy paranormal type of stuff that made me scared. Or like all those crime documentaries that you see all over Netflix where like there's that serial killer and he goes after all these women that he doesn't even really know but he stalks them. Like none of that made me feel good. When things are just like really violent or really scary or really creepy, like I feel like that just puts like this dark cloud over my head, over my body. It, it kind of like invites this darker energy into my life and I don't want it. I don't like the way that it makes me feel. It makes me feel just like very on edge and, and anxious and not very comfortable and not as safe in my body and in my world. You know, one of my friends, she's a hypnotherapist and she says that we're basically in a state of hypnosis whenever we're consuming media, like TV or movies or things like that. And I feel like I don't want to be consuming that much like violent and dark content. And it's hard because a lot of those like movies or TV shows or podcasts, like they're really entertaining and they hook you, right? Like you really want to keep watching because you want to see what happens or who was the murderer or whatever. And it hooks you. But whenever you finish watching that kind of stuff or consuming that media, you never feel good. You never feel like, oh, I'm so glad I watched that. It's more like, oh, I'm so glad that that's over. So I cut like 95, 90, 96% of that type of media out of my life because it just didn't make me feel good. You know, I'll watch like an occasional scary movie here and there, but it's quite rare. And I just don't like watching too many violent things, too many scary things, too many creepy things, too many like really dark, creepy, scary action scenes where they're like doing you know, creepy things. Like, I just don't like it. I don't like the way it makes me feel, so I cut them out. Now, kind of along these same lines, the second thing that I cut out of my life is sad music. You know, music is very, very powerful. And the reason why we love it so much is because you can like really feel the emotions of a song. It really makes you feel some type of way. And so if you're listening to happy music, it'll make you feel happier. You know, if you're listening to sexy music, it'll make you feel sexier. But if you listen to sad music, it'll make you feel feel more sad. I just feel like so much music these days is really sad and heavy and darker and like more emo. <laughs> and that just kind of makes me feel more sad for no reason, just because I'm listening to that type of song and I can feel that emotion through the music, but it's not actually my sadness and I don't want to carry it around with me all the time. I don't want to feel that all the time. I love music and I think it's such a powerful tool to put you in the energy that you want to feel. And so I think it's really important that you choose what you listen to carefully and that you choose playlists that make you feel good and that inspire you or that make you feel just like however you want to feel. The only times where I intentionally listen to sad music is where when I feel like I really need to cry but I can't for some reason. Um, I've always been like it's kind of I'm not like a really big crier so sometimes I need like a little bit of extra support to uh, get me going and if I listen to sad music then it will actually help a lot and then once I'm done then I'm just gonna turn it off and go <laughs> about my day. So anyways I don't listen to sad music that much anymore, even though it is really beautiful and you know you can feel the emotions and that's such a really cool thing, but I'm just, it just doesn't make me feel good. So I cut it out. So the next thing that I cut out of my life is excessively saying things that I don't want. For example, let me explain. If I keep saying over and over again, I feel tired. I feel horrible. I feel ugly. I'm bad at this. This is hard. I can't afford that. I have no friends, you know, whatever. But words are also very powerful and they can affect how you feel and how you show up in your life. Like if I don't want things to be hard in my life, it's not gonna help the situation if I keep repeating over and over and over again, this is hard, this is stressful, this is too hard. Like that is not helping the situation. All you're doing is putting your energy and your attention to the thing that you don't like and the thing that you don't want. Or even, you know, like saying things like, I can't afford that. 
that might be totally true, but there is a more positive way to say it. You can say, it's not my priority right now. It's not where I wanna put my money right now. I just think that sometimes our words can really bring us down and sometimes we can latch onto those negative feelings that we're feeling, but that just doesn't help us. I just think it's important to be really, really careful with what you say and especially what you say repeatedly, like over and over again, right? Like if you say like, oh, this is hard. If you just say that once, not a big deal. But if you keep repeating it over and over again while you're trying to do something, right? Like this is hard, this is hard, this is so hard. Ugh, this is so hard. It feels so heavy, it feels so stressful. You're just living in that struggle. You're amplifying that struggle. Not good, low vibe, gotta cut it out. And it's not about ignoring certain feelings either, right? Like let's say you are not really feeling that great. Maybe you're getting sick. If you just keep saying to yourself over and over again, I feel terrible, I don't feel good, that's not helping the situation. But not saying those things isn't lying to yourself, right? It's just putting your energy and your focus on something else. Like if you just keep repeating over and over again that you don't feel good, all that's gonna do is make you feel worse. Or if you don't truly have friends, like if you say like, I have no friends and that is like just matter of fact, that is true, there is a more positive way to say that. You can say, I'm open to more friendship in my life. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you don't want something to be true, don't like completely hone in and dial in and focus completely on that and keep repeating that over and over and over again. There is almost always a positive way to say the same exact thing. And we also don't need to be just repeating the negative aspects in our life over and over again, whether it's out loud or just in our head. Even if it's a joke, like self-deprecating humor, don't do it. It doesn't put you in the energy that you wanna feel. It doesn't put you in the energy to thrive. And number four, the next thing that I cut out of my life is is using my phone as my alarm in the morning. And it just kind of, you know, it jolts you awake. It is not a nice way to wake up in the morning. And so I changed that. I actually got an alarm clock on my nightstand. You can't see it, but it's over there. And it wakes me up sweetly and softly and lovingly. And oh my goodness, it makes me feel so much better in the morning. The difference is night and day. I got the Hatch, which I really, really love, not sponsored by them. There are a ton of other cheaper options on Amazon as well, um, but I personally think the Hatch is like worth the money and definitely the best. It wakes you up by kind of like exposing, like creating light coming out of the alarm for like 30 minutes or so. So it gently, you know, and slowly brightens up the room. Then you can also pick whatever sound you want. They have a lot of like soothing sounds to wake up to. So I chose wind chimes because I like that, but it's just so nice. I usually wake up before the sound even comes on. So it's just a really nice way to wake up gently and like more on your own, like a beautiful, luxurious way to wake up in the morning, you know, more of that like soft life vibes. There's just so much more of like a positive, happy energy around it and I love it. Next thing that I cut out is processed junky food because food also has energy, it carries energy. And there is a major difference in how you feel, not just physically, but also energetically as well when you eat food in its more natural form form, just more simple food. So either food that has grown on the earth or lived on the earth, or just food that's as close to its natural form as possible versus eating food that was just completely made in like a factory or something. And of course, it's not like I never ever eat processed junky food sometimes, or, you know, I never ever watch a scary movie ever again, but it's just not a part of my norm. It's not a part of my normal diet. And I'm not just talking about like a sandwich where the bread was made in a facility. Like, no, no, no. I'm I'm talking about like real processed junky food, like Pop-Tarts, Oreos, soda, cinnamon toast crunch cereal. I loved that as a kid. Those pre-made like microwavable meals, usually those are not very good, not very natural at all. Kraft mac and cheese, also lived on that as a child. But even like those plant-based proteins, I'm not talking about like chickpeas and lentils, I'm talking about like those plant-based patty sort of proteins, like burger patties. A lot of those are just filled with terrible ingredients, like, you know, Beyond Burger and things like that they market it as this health food, when in reality, it's just mostly processed crap. Of course, it's totally fine if you don't wanna eat meat, but I'm just saying a lot of those replacements that are like just fully made, you know, in like processed facilities, like those aren't healthy for you either. And I'm not saying that there's one specific diet that you must follow. You must follow the same way that I eat. I'm just saying 
that when you eat food that's closer to its natural form and it's just more simple, you can feel the energy in the food. I feel like you get that energy transfer and it just makes you feel better. Processed junk food that's not actually real food, it's just low vibe. I find that the more natural of a diet I eat and the more simple of foods that I eat, yes, the better I feel, but also the clearer I am and the more in tune I am with my intuition and the happier I am. And I also look better too, which is always a plus. Now, number six, the next thing that I cut out of my life to be more high vibe is excessive scrolling on social media. And obviously that that's just bad in general, but there are two specific situations in which I cut out that excessive scrolling. So the first one, and this is kind of something that I did more recently actually, and it's really, really improved the quality of my life. Whenever I went to go rest, like, you know, if I was just running a bunch of errands or I just did work for a while or cleaned my house or whatever, and I felt like I needed rest, like I needed to like sit on the couch for a little bit, I realized that I was automatically just grabbing my phone and opening like different apps, whether it was Instagram or whatever. And so I just had this connection in my brain that resting always meant checking social media because I guess it's kind of just like, well, what else am I gonna do? I'm just sitting here anyways. And I know that like a lot of other people do that as well, but that didn't make me feel good. My rest was never that restful. And yeah, like going on social media for the first like five to 10 minutes, that felt good. But then after that, I just kept doing it and just kept scrolling, even though I didn't even really wanna be on there anymore and I wasn't even really enjoying it anymore. I just kept doing it. So for me, I cut out this connection, that rest or like taking a break break meant automatically going and scrolling on social media. I cut that out and I wouldn't really let myself do that anymore. And instead I would either just like sit there or I would, you know, stare outside the window or maybe read a book if I felt like I had the energy for that. Or maybe just sit and like pet my dogs or even just watching like a quick, happy, funny TV show like The Office, like in my opinion, I feel like that is a better thing to do than scrolling on social media. I think that it has better energy and makes you feel better. Scrolling just became this like habitual thing for us and that's the truth, but it's not good and it's low vibe. And I think that as a society, we would feel a lot better if we didn't spend so much time on social media. And we're just so used to it that when we have just like even five seconds of downtime, we immediately pick up our phone and open Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is. We do this like without even thinking, like we're waiting at a red light, open Instagram. We have to let ourselves get bored sometimes and to just sit there and be. So one little trick that I did for myself that has worked like amazingly well and it's so easy to do, I have a little folder on my phone that's like all of my social media apps, they're all in one folder, and I move that folder around all the time. It's never on my first page though, it's always on like my second or third. I move that folder around like every few weeks or something like that so that I don't habitually know exactly where it is. Like once I start knowing, you know, exactly where it is and I can quickly scroll to it and know where it is, then I change it and I move it somewhere else. And so it makes it much more of an intentional process when I choose to go on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or anything like that because I have to like find it again versus being like this zombie habit that we just do without even realizing. Try it, it works really well. Now the other thing that I cut out in regards to scrolling on social media was scrolling or just like being on social media at all in the first hour of the day, especially like the first 30 minutes of the day. I just feel like that time is like a very sacred time in our day. And our subconscious is very affected by what we see and how we feel in those moments. And I feel like it sets us up for how we feel the rest of the day. There is a noticeable difference in my energy and how good I feel when I don't even open a social media app until like 11 or 12. It makes me feel so good. It puts me in so much better of a mood. I'm more just like focused on myself and my goals and what I wanna do with my day. It's just so much more peaceful. And number seven, the next thing I cut out of my life is too much time indoors. And sadly, as a species, as human beings, we all spend way too much time inside. But nature and fresh air and sunshine has such a high vibration. It makes you feel so good. It's calming, it's grounding, it's happy. And we don't get as much fresh air and sunshine as we should. I always say that humans are like 
plants. If we get too little sunshine, we die. But if we also get too much sunshine, then we also die. And we all have our own individual levels of what we need. So for example, I'm really pale. So if I spend like more than 20 minutes in the sun, I'm gonna get sunburned. I don't need that much. And it's been shown, I think I heard Dr. Stephen Cabral, he's a naturopath. He talked about this once, how the color of our skin, like the tone of our skin affects how we synthesize vitamin D and how we get that from the sun. And so for example, because I'm very pale, I don't have much melanin in my skin naturally. You know, I come from like Norwegian ancestry and things like that. I get vitamin D from the sun rather quickly. Whereas if you have like a darker skin tone naturally, maybe your ancestors or you live near the equator, like, you know, I don't know, Southern Italy or Mexico or something like that. Because you naturally have more melanin in your skin, you need more time outside in the sun to get the same amount of vitamin D. I just thought that was kind of interesting, but I don't know, I feel like the sun has been like very demonized lately. Like, oh my God, it's giving us wrinkles, but the sun, is nature. Obviously you can get too much sun and that could not be good for you, of course. But too little sun is not good either. The sun is energy in its purest form and you need time outside and time outside without sunscreen. And I know the dermatologists are gonna come for me. I know, I know, it's okay. We can all have our own, you know, different opinions, that's fine. But as human beings, we need those sun rays sometimes. I'm not saying to just roast out there, obviously not good, don't burn yourself. That's very bad, but too little is unhealthy. And in my opinion, I think it really weakens our vibration. There's this great doctor that I follow on Instagram. Her name is Dr. Keneally. I'll link her Instagram down below in the description box, but she is, she's really interesting. She is a Western trained, like normally trained doctor. She's a cancer doctor, but she also looks at things with a holistic lens. So I just like really, really like her perspective. And she talks all the time on her Instagram stories about the importance of getting sunshine and how, because she has her own private practice, she works between like eight to five or something like that every day. She intentionally does not wear sunscreen because she wants to get as much sun as she can. I'm talking about on work days because she needs that sun, right? She doesn't need protection from the sun. She needs more of it. She has an Instagram highlight called Sunshine. Highly, highly recommend you check it out. It's really interesting. Again, I just really, really like her perspective of like very like Western trained, understands the science, but also with that holistic view. There's a reason why most animals will love to lay in the sun for a little bit because it is healing to some extent. Like my dog Piper, she loves to just go outside when it's sunny and just lay out either in the grass or on our patio in the sun. And then after like 15 minutes, she's done with it and she asked to come back inside because she's had enough sun and now she feels good and now she feels more energized. But not just sun, <laughs> kind of went on a tangent with that, but just nature in general and fresh air and putting your feet in the grass and seeing the trees and touching the leaves and all of that kind of stuff. It is one of the most high vibe things that we have on this earth. And too much time indoors cuts us off from that. Now number eight, the next thing I cut out of my life was was excessive self help. Now, when we're on this level up journey, this glow up journey, when we want to become our best selves, obviously we are consuming content. Hopefully we are consuming content, reading books, things like that can, that can help us do that. And all of that stuff can be so valuable, but sometimes we can get caught up in this sort of self improvement trap and we can get stuck on this hamster wheel that we can't get off of to the point where we are never good enough and we're never satisfied with our life and we aren't able to see the little joys and the lightheartedness in life and we just start taking life too seriously. When you're just constantly consuming self-help content, it takes away a lot of that fun and lightheartedness out of life. And that's why even like with some of my content, you know, since I talk about a lot of self-improvement type of topics, I like to break it up sometimes with little things like a vlog here and there or a dress haul or something like that, or just something like a video that's more lighthearted because even as a creator, I don't like that feeling of like constantly, always, always, you need to be better. You need to be this, you need to be doing that. Like, I don't like that energy. It's heavy and it's low vibe. And I think there's so much beauty in wanting to grow and wanting to be your best self, but while also still accepting and loving who you are now and accepting your life as it is now and finding the joy and the specialness in what is right now. I think in my opinion, if the only type of books you're reading are self-help books, the only type of podcasts you're listening to are self-improvement podcasts, if the only YouTube videos you're watching are you know, self-improvement type of videos, then I think sometimes that can mean that it's 
taken a little bit overboard. And I think that there's so much beauty in picking up a fiction book or listening to a podcast just because, just because it's funny and it makes you laugh. Again, not everything has to be so serious and sometimes we can do things just because it's fun. I have a whole video that dives into this topic called when leveling up becomes toxic. So I really love this video. If you want to dive more into that topic, definitely go check out this video right here if you want a deeper dive into my thoughts. But besides that, that is it for the day. So thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate you being here. Say hello in the comments, share your thoughts in the comments. I always love to hear them. I will see you over here or I will see you next time. Bye.